our last video, we looked at uh, Quay Street going east from Huron Avenue. And in this video, we'd like to uh, look at Huron uh, going west on Quay. And actually, uh, earlier, before it was Quay Street, it was River Street west of Huron and Quay Street east of Huron. And so you'll see some maps showing both. In a previous video, we looked at this corner when Fox Jewelry Store was here. And uh, in that video, I meant to include a short video clip of uh, Fox's. And I uh, had one of those blasted senior moments where I forgot. So I'm going to include it here to give you a little look at uh, what it looked like in color. Here it is. This is from 1942. I believe the store next door is Arden's. And it's hard to make out this uh, this next one, but this uh, this last one here you can tell is Fannie Farmer. Here we see the uh, condos on the southwest corner, but in uh, 2009 this is what it looked like while the condos were being built. The thing about uh, side streets like Quay Street is that uh, you don't see very many photos of these streets and even fewer postcards unless there's something of interest uh, to the city on a street like that. So it's a challenge making a video when there aren't many pictures or postcards, but uh, I think I found a way that we can make this block, uh, well, relatively interesting anyway. Today this block consists mainly of parking lots and it's from this parking lot uh, looking uh, east, uh, that, that looks pretty much like today, at least during the Blue Water Festival. And of course, this is what the Bolodrome Lanes uh, bowling alleys looked like in the Zebra Bar. But uh, when I was growing up, it looked more like this here. You can see the sign on the side of the building saying Bolodrome and eight air conditioned alleys. And then in the front of the building, you can make out the zebra bar sign behind the telephone pole there. Some of the businesses you may remember going from uh, the corner store uh, on the corner of Huron and Quay, which have been Fox Jewelry uh, during this time period. You had the Camera Craft gift store, you had rates of uh, shoes, you had a couple different beauty shops in there. You had the Blue Water Grill, Central Card Shop. And of course, Ideal Cleaners, and then the Bowling Alley. This is the river view. Most of these uh, businesses I just mentioned were here through several decades. Uh, Razo Shoes was uh, famous shoes before that. Back in the 1940s, the Bowdrome was called the Robo Alleys. And before that, it was a warehouse for Sears and Roebuck. This area right here at the west end of Quay uh, used to look like this. In the 60s and 50s, it was a siding and roofing company. But in the 40s and 30s, it was Spencer Coal Company, as you can see here. This looks like it could be the owner and employees of Spencer Coal. In the 1920s, it was uh, McCollum Coal Company at that location. It uh, was owned by McCollum all the way back into uh, the 1800s, as you can see from this uh, city map here of 1898. It shows the McCollum Coal and Wood Company, so they sold both. In this photo from 1885, you can see that there's a factory or a plant uh, in this location. I often wonder what it was, but when I looked at this map here from 1887, uh, we can see what it is. It is a drain and sewer pipe company. In the 1860s, it would have looked like this. And it wouldn't have been at all unusual to see this load of lumber going down the river. It was the main means of transporting the lumber from point A to point B. And Black River in the 1860s was quite often just filled with lumber. We'll look at that a little bit later on in a different video. The bridge in the foreground, of course, is a military street bridge and it's looking west. 
According to this sign here, there is a $5 fine for something. I'd be curious to know what that something is. But we can't quite make it out. Alright, let's go across the street to the north side of Quay, or in that case River Street back then. And you can see that uh, City Gas Works takes up a good share of the block. That circle there is one large gas tank that they had in the block. And here's a photograph of that tank. Five years later, in 1892, according to this map, there's now two tanks. Which you can see in this photo here. In this aerial view here, we can see the tank right there in the middle of the city, or in the middle of the block anyway. And it uh, looks like just one large tank. I don't know if we can't see a tank behind it or not. And you can see from this map that at one time there was three tanks at that location. And in this one here it shows four tanks. But over the years eventually they all disappeared. The gas company's office was also on Quay and here we see the inside of the office. Just to the west of the gas company office was the E.R. Marcotte Wood Finishing Company. And you can see by this sign, E.R. Marcotte, all kinds of inside finish. Windows and door frames made to order. Also notice the address on the left, 563 River Street. Also notice the sign below that. It says, Riding on St. Clair River, Omar Conger. And it looks like a couple of the workers. Here's something I found interesting. Next to the uh, gas company, there was a hotel. And the name of the hotel was Walsh's Hotel. And if that sounds familiar, it's because we looked at it uh, in the last video. It was right next to the old Valentine building. That was years later, so for some reason they must have moved. Also, they had stables right there with the hotel, and I imagine that's that long, narrow rectangle alongside the hotel. Just a couple doors east of the hotel, we see a plumber shop, and that would be C.B. Doe and Son. They were plumbers and steam and gas fitters. I don't have a picture of the building, but here's an invoice from them. It looks like the gas company had their own plumbing and steam uh, gas fitting company. It was located right at uh, at the gas works itself, it says office and shop at gas works. You can see in this map that River Street goes all the way to Huron Avenue. As you get to the west end of uh, River Street, or now Quay, uh, there was a little hitch. You stopped, you went right, and then you went left again. You went into uh, Erie Square, and you took a, a left by the high school. There was a road there then, there isn't now. Here's a picture of River Street that originally went alongside the high school there. Of course, in the satellite view, you can't uh, see River Street. But this whole section there where the newer part of the community college is by the river, uh, back in 1898, uh, this is what it was. Jenkinson and Sandberg uh, Coal and Woodyard. And it took up pretty much that whole corner, a lot of space. And if you go a little further up Black River, or River Street, however you want to look at it, uh, you'll see uh, Cameron and Company, which was the, uh, a lime company uh, situated there. And you can also see the porch here in high school. If you're looking from the river, you would see the lime company and you would see the back of uh, uh, the porch here in high school, which is what this picture here shows. We see a ship being either loaded or unloaded, and uh, name of the ship is Bessie. And of course you see the signage for Cameron and Company, uh, lime, cement. And then we also see the high school there in the background. Here's what it says about Cameron and Company. It's one of Port Huron's leading institutions and handles an enormous business in their lime. They make a specialty of lime, cement, sewer pipe, fire brick, and builder's material, both wholesale and retail. The following cut is an excellent production of their warehouses on River Street, 
at the west end of 7th Street Bridge. D.H. Cameron, the manager of the concern, is a young man of 29 years. He has been connected with Port Huron's business interests for nearly 14 years and holds an enviable reputation. For 10 years, he was connected with the Jinx Shipbuilding Company as bookkeeper. The high school that we saw the back of in that photo uh, is this high school here. This is the front of it. It burned down in 1906. As we continue up River Street from Erie, uh, we come to our next uh, portrait and landmark, and that was the Kern uh, Bottling Company. And you can see it right here. I say landmark because it was a very tall building. It was seven or eight stories high, and then, of course, it had the chimney alongside of it. If you want to know where it would be today, it would be right about here, where the uh, central house of the fire department is. But this is what it looked like back in the day. It's quite an impressive building for a factory. This is what the brochure of the year 1900 says about Kearns. Horyurn is noted for the manufacture of a beer that is rapidly coming into prominence in all parts of the state. In fact, the output of the Kern brewery is increasing so fast that additions have been built each year. The brewery and connections cover over an acre of ground on River Street and are the life of that part of the city. Chris Kern, the proprietor, was born in Germany 52 years ago and came to this city in 1870. Nine years afterwards, he opened business on the present site and has had continued success ever since. In 1882, the buildings burned and were rebuilt in 1882-83. In 1894, the place burned again and in 1894-95, over the charred remains was built the present elegant structure, of which the proprietor is justly proud. The capacity of Kearns Brewery is 200,000 barrels annually and employs 45 men the year round. The standard brands of beer brewed are at the Pilsen and the Bohemian for family use. These beers are brewed so as to act as a health restorative and are highly recommended. The Kern Brewery is always open for inspection and Mr. Kern is more than pleased to show visitors through. This is a later picture of Kearns, probably taken in the early 40s. But notice that little tower to the right of the tall tower, sticking up just above the roof line there. It looks like it uh, has a little vent on top of it. Quite a unique looking uh, tower. But it helps to identify this next picture that we're going to look at. Also notice the smokestack has gone from an angular uh, smokestack to a round smokestack. In this photo here, you can see that uh, little tower that we were just looking at in the other picture and also the smokestack, uh, which means that we'd be looking west uh, on the river with River Street on our right and Kern on our right. So that would make the bridge a 10th Street Bridge. Here's a little closer look at it. And you can see it's one of the swing bridges. Here's a photo looking the opposite way. This is taken from the 10th Street Bridge. You can see Kearns uh, Bottling Company there, and then uh, all further down you can see uh, the post office. Gives you a good idea too what Black River looked like along the uh, riverfront. Uh, they certainly weren't concerned about tourists back then. It certainly looks much better today. And then in the bottom right hand corner here you can see the supports for the 10th Street Bridge. You can see from this map it was a pretty large complex. But things changed over the years, and uh, the name changed over the years, too. You can see by this map that it's Friars Ale Brewing Company now. And eventually another change took place. The building was torn down. Another landmark gone from Port Huron. In the 1800s, there was five breweries in Port Huron. And by 1907, there was just two. There was Kearns and also a poor chair and brewing company on Bard that we looked at in a previous video. And by 1946, there was only one brewery left and that was uh, Friars Ale, which was the former Kearns.
in our next video, we'll see what else is up on River Street.